Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to build a sugarcane farm for Minecraft Bedrock. Let's go. In this video, I'm going to be going over a few different types of sugarcane farms. I'm going to be showing you the pros and cons of each. And finally, I'm going to be giving you the build tutorial for each of the farms. First up, we have the basic sugarcane farm design. This is the one that most people will know of. This design is very simple and it's completely tileable, which means that you could build two directly next to each other or an entire row directly next to each other with no gap and it would work fine. One downside of this farm however is the fact that it will sometimes catch an item here instead of inside of the hopper so occasionally you will lose a few items. The other downside is because this doesn't use any funky gimmicks it will literally just mine the sugarcane when it grows naturally. This means it will be very slow because sugarcane is the slowest growing crop of all. So to build this, first we're going to place down a solid block, then place a piston like this, and then place an observer pointing this way. You need to make sure that the face side is on the extending side of the piston. Then out the back, we're going to place one solid block here, and a redstone dust on top. This is pretty much the entirety of the auto mining system. Then we're going to place a hopper pointing to the side, like this, and we're going to place a chest here. If you were going to have multiple next to each other, you might just place some extra hoppers like this, and you'd have the chest right at the end. But for this, we're just doing a single one like this. Then, get a water bucket, and while shift clicking, place it in here. You'll need to make sure you are crouching so that you can put the water inside of here. Then just place a piece of sugar cane here, and surround the entire thing in some glass. That's the entirety of the single section of this farm. If you did want to build multiple of this farm next to each other in a long row, all you'd need to do is repeat this for the amount of total sugarcane farms you would like. So we're just going to basically repeat this entire thing over here. We're just going to place the piston here, observer here, resin dust here. Make sure to just break this glass and extend it for the amount of blocks that you're going to be building this farm for. And we're just going to break this, hop in a hopper, water bucket, sugar cane, and then we can just block this entire section off, and the farm should be working. As I said, you can extend this for as many blocks as you want, and it should work fine. The next design we have is this one. It looks almost exactly the same, but the difference is it's got a different collection system. This is using a hopper minecart to make sure that every single drop that comes out of this farm goes into the chest. So this farm will lose slightly less drops than this one over here. Overall the top section is exactly the same, so we're going to start from there. So we're going to start out with this basic little segment like this. This is from the previous farm. Then, leaving a one block gap, we're going to put our water in the same place, but without the hopper this time. Then we're going to place a sugar cane down like this. Then dig down by three blocks. And we're going to place down a double chest. Make it so that it is just next to where the sugar cane is here. Then we're going to break the block next to it, and the one above that. And then go down the other side. Place a hopper directly underneath the sugar cane, like so. Then put down a rail, and a hopper minecart on it. And then fill it all up, make sure the hopper minecart will not move. Then, we just need to surround it by some glass up here. Make sure to put glass on top of this block here to make sure that all of the items go into the hopper minecart. Like so. If you did want to extend this like the previous one, you'd build more segments of this, more sugarcane and more of this. However, underneath here there is something you could do extra. While you could just add more rails and more hopper minecarts, they often move around. What I would recommend doing is still placing in all the hoppers like this, but making a long rail with a powered rail at the end, and the hopper minecart can then roll forwards and backwards. You just need to make sure there's a block here if you're going to do that. So next up, we have the bone mill power design. As you can see, this farm is very small and simple. The only downside of it is the fact that it will need an external source of bone mill in order to work. However, it is going to be extremely efficient. It's by far the most efficient design of all. 
if you do need an external source of bone meal, then you'll need a farm for that. Luckily, I have a farm that will produce bones and therefore bone meal. Just click the little I button in the top right corner to take you to that farm. So to build this, first place down a chest, doesn't have to be a double, but I'm just doing that for extra storage. Then place a hopper going into the side. Now while sneaking, click on here, and it will place a water inside of it. Then place sugar cane like this, a dispenser here, and then put a lever and flick it down. Place a piston on top like this. Then get an observer, and make sure it is facing this way like so, so the face is pointing like this. Then place an observer facing the other way. You should see the end starts to flash. And if you flick up the lever, it should work like so. We're now just going to quickly surround this by some glass. Make sure the glass goes up by three blocks on the inside, so the sugar cane can fully grow, and so that you get the maximum efficiency. While this farm will now work if you pop in some bone meal, I would recommend also placing a hopper on the side here, and then you can put a chest here for bone meal. You could then connect this hopper up to an external source of bone meal if you had a farm that does that. So with this farm, while this will work like this, you could change the collection system to be lossless like the one over here. To do this, you just need to break the hopper in the chest and then replace it with a system exactly like the one over here. You can just jump back a few seconds if you want to see that in action. So next up is the last farm that we're going to be going over today. This one is a large sugarcane farm that is most suited for very large applications. This is because a lot of the sugarcane might get lost, however it uses a lot less materials than one of these if you wanted to build a large one with hundreds and hundreds of sugarcane. So the way this farm is going to work is by having this little flying machine that is going to go across. And this will push all the sugarcane as you can see, and it should all fall down where it can be collected. So, first to do this, we're going to have to find a nice open area. This area here should work fine. Then we're going to place six pieces of obsidian, like this. And then we're going to leave a one block gap, and we're going to put in some water. You can then fill this in with sugarcane, on both sides. Then leave a one block gap, put in some more water, and repeat the process. You can do this for as many pieces as you want. I'm going to do this for another two. Once you've filled in as many as you want, just place some obsidian along the end, like this. So now along the entire edge of this farm, we're going to place some solid blocks. Make sure to do this on both sides. Then put some obsidian on top of the blocks you just placed. Then, although this isn't necessary, I'd recommend just putting some solid blocks on top. This will make sure you lose less sugarcane outside of the farm. Like this. So now on one end, count across by three blocks, so one, two, three. And then leave a two block gap. Then place a temporary block like this. Then we're just going to place a piece of obsidian on top, like this. Then across one way, starting on this block, place four slime blocks like this. Then we're going to place a piston here, a sticky piston here, and an observer. Make sure the observer is facing this way, with a little arrow pointing into the sticky piston like this. Then we're going to place a temporary block here, and an observer. Make sure the observer is facing upwards like this. Then we're going to continue this, on the other side, exactly the same. So four slime like this, with the first block being on a sticky piston. Then we're going to place a sticky piston here, piston here, and an observer pointing this way. Again, make sure the little triangle is pointing into the piston here. Then we're going to place an observer pointing down like this. Now on the other side, count three across, so that'll be one, two, three, two blocks back to here, and we're going to place an obsidian, that's with a two block gap like this. This is going to make sure the flying machine will stop when it gets to this side. 
Now what we're going to do is on the side that this observer is here, we're going to place an observer pointing into it like this. Place a solid block out the back, place two redstone dust like this, place a lever on the side, this is going to be the on off switch, click it down if you want to switch the farm off. Then we're going to place a button here just in case we never need to set off the farm for any reason. Then just place a redstone lamp on top. As you can see, the flying machine should set off to the other end. This is going to allow us to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to place an observer, a block behind it, two redstone dust like this. Here you only need a button just in case it ever stops. And then just place a lamp on top. Now the flying machine should go from one side to the other. If you test it, you should see that if you flick up the lever, the flying machine should automatically start going in the other direction. If you flick it down, it should stop when it gets to this side. Now around the back, we're going to build a three high wall behind this obsidian. So you can build this up, three blocks like this. Then continue it around, so that it is set back by one block from the sides. Like this. You can now do the same on the other side. It should now be looking like this. So now we're going to go over to one of these corners, we're going to mine down by a block, and then another block. As you can see at this level here, we've got a bit of space to build a minecart rail. I'd recommend mining down three blocks in each corner, and then on the second block, mining some blocks out at that level. So we should be able to, in no time, just empty out this area. Then once you've done that, we're going to go to one corner. In this case, I'm just going to go over to this corner, break a few blocks here, and place down a chest. You could build a double chest if you wanted, or something like that. We're then going to put some hoppers like this, you only really need about three or four poking out, so I'm just going to do it like this. Then we're going to begin to cover in this area with some blocks. Doesn't matter what, you could just dirt here. And then we're just going to build a line of rails like this. Three like this. Make sure there's a redstone block in the middle. And then another one like this, so a total of four. And then we're just going to loop it round like this. This wavy pattern will ensure that it links up correctly. Like this. Then just place in a hopper minecart, give it a nudge, and it should get launched around. Then you can just cover over this area with some solid blocks. Make sure you do this on both sides. So now I'm going to add in a minecart rail to collect all of the drops from the sugarcane that land inside the zone. First thing I'm going to do is at the side just mark out where the sugarcane is. Like this. I'm just going to do the same on the other side. This will just make it easy to mark out where the rails are going to go. Like this. So now on each of these just going to dig down by two blocks and break the one below the top block. Then I'm going to break it all the way back. Do the same for all of these. Now we're just going to do the same on the other side. You should only have to break a few blocks. Like this. Then we're just going to connect them up by flattening these areas down to two blocks underneath so that they are in line with the tunnels you just made. Make sure to include the blocks in between them. Like this. Now for the most difficult bit, we just need to link them all up. The way I'd recommend doing this is starting at one corner, placing a few rails. You are okay to break this block underneath here, but no more. Place as many rails as you can like this. Then go over to the other side, mine down by a block, and bring the rail the whole way through. 
Then once it's through, what I'd recommend doing is bringing it around like this. Building a rail go through like this. Going to the other side, getting it through. And then looping it around like this. Break this block, place some like this. And continue this pattern for the rest. Once you've done that, you just need to connect them both back together. Like this. So now, all we need to do is go over to one side, and I'd recommend you just place a few powered rails. Then, on each end of here, we're going to place a block of redstone. And then we're going to link this all up with a powered rail here, like this. If the pair, if rails are linking up wrongly like this, just replace them until they do, like this. Then just place down a hopper minecart, give it a nudge, and make sure it goes the entire way through. As you can see, it goes the entire way through. What we just need to do now, go over to one corner, break a few of these blocks, and place some hoppers. Then we're just going to place a double chest coming out from where one of these hoppers is pointing. You now replace all the rails and put down your minecart hopper. Finally, one final upgrade I would recommend adding, but it isn't necessary, is to just place a few pieces of slime here. This is going to make sure that none of the sugar cane gets on top. However, this isn't necessary, but it might boost your farm output by a couple percent. So now, to use this farm, you can just flick up this lever, and as you can see, it starts to mine all the sugarcane automatically. Occasionally a few items will get stuck, however this is a small percentage, and at the end of the day, you are paying for a tiny bit of efficiency for the simplicity for a large scale design. If you flick this lever down, as you can see, the fab stops. One thing with this fab, the rate of the fab can vary a lot depending on the size, but generally, if you times the amount of sugarcane you've got in total by 1.1, that will give you the rough amount of sugarcane coming out of this farm per hour. So that's it, that's how to build a sugarcane farm in Minecraft Bedrock. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments below. If you have any ideas for future videos, again, pop them down in the comments below. I love to hear them. Okay, that's it for today, see you next time, bye.